according to some that already received their Cybertruck, there is a little problem with charging. And it's not just that it is slow. Well, you may already have heard the Cybertruck actually does charge relatively slow and its range is not really that great either. Um, we probably would have expected more. I don't know what the real life range is yet since we have not received our Cybertruck yet, but hopefully soon. But based on what I've seen with the Model Y that was delivered with the 4680 cells, well, those Model Ys had low range and slow charging speeds. So there was not anything else to be expected from the Cybertruck because it has the 4680. The 4680 has not lived up to what Tesla told us a couple years ago uh, during their battery day, how great this cell will be. Up to this point, it was just disappointing, basically. And so the Cybertruck is no different at this point. Low range, low charging speeds. But now there is another issue. And the issue is you basically can only charge at Tesla superchargers at this point. Because of the design of the charge port, it will not accept the Tesla CCS adapter. This here is the Tesla CCS adapter. This is an original Tesla, not an aftermarket product. And well, just by looking at it, you can tell pretty much that it needs to go flush with the car because it needs to press the pin right here. And there is really not much room for something to be here. So the charge port on the car actually has to be all the way out and can't be recessed as it is in the Cybertruck. And that's a problem. So. Just physically, this Tesla adapter does not work for the Cybertruck. So there has to be a different adapter. But then it's not only that it doesn't work physically, it's also, if we look at the tag, it is rated at 500 volts, 300 amps. While the Cybertruck is built on an 800 volt battery architecture. So that doesn't work. Even though the Cybertruck has the technology to charge at 400 volts, since currently there is no Tesla supercharger out there that can charge at more than 400 volts. All the superchargers out there, even the version 4 looking cabinets or dispensers, whatever you want to call them, they are not charging at any more than 400 volts because the power cabinet behind it is not any different than on a version 3 charger, at least not at this point. So um, even if you're going to a Tesla supercharger, you're only going to charge at 400 volts and not at 800 volts. But the problem is if you could use this adapter, and you would go to a Electrify America, like a 350 kilowatt charger, while well, they're capable of charging at 800 volts. So then this here would have to be rated at a thousand volts. And maybe that is the reason that Tesla made it impossible to use this adapter because they don't have an adapter currently that is rated properly. I don't know. I mean, maybe this adapter actually can handle a thousand volts, but it was only tested for up to 500 because that's all they needed at the time when they designed this adapter. And it may be possible to handle a thousand volts, no problem. But then physically, it just does not fit. So is that a problem? Well, for most of these urban warriors that currently take delivery of the Cybertruck, that is not an issue. There is plenty of supercharging around in most of these areas, like in California, <laughs> where there's a supercharger almost at every corner. Now here in Montana, that's a little bit different. We have a uh, few and distances are far in between those superchargers. Yes, you can make it definitely with a Tesla from one charger to another, even with the Cybertruck, that will be possible. Now, if you're towing in the wintertime with the Cybertruck, well, we still have to figure that out if we can make those distances from one supercharger to the next. That may not be possible. We'll find out. Make sure you are subscribed to the channel so you don't miss out when we get the Cybertruck and we can actually test this and see if you can actually travel with 
a Cybertruck towing a trailer um, in an area like Montana. I mean, you can go up and down the West Coast and the East Coast, probably no problem. You might even skip superchargers there, but here in Montana, maybe not so much. Also, there's another problem here in Montana. We do not have superchargers from here in the Missoula area. If you're going north, there's no superchargers. If we're going south, there is no superchargers. <laughs> so we have to head east or west first before we can travel south or north uh, where the superchargers are. But we do have CCS chargers in the areas without superchargers. They're not necessarily the fastest. Actually, most of them are really not fast at all. <laughs> uh, 50 kilowatts is uh, about the most you get at many stations. But at least one could travel and if one can charge at 50 kilowatts, that would be great. But this don't work. So now what? What the heck can one do so one can travel with the Cybertruck? This here may be the solution. You ever seen this before? This used to be sold on Tesla's website. This is an official, says it right there, Tesla accessory that used to be sold. It's a big old clunker. It's way bigger than the CCS adapter. What is it? Right there. You may recognize this. Maybe not. If you ever been to any other than superchargers, you may have seen a big clunky thing like this that looks round. This is a Chademo adapter. And these used to be sold by Tesla because, well, initially Teslas could not charge at CCS at all. There was no adapter for CCS at all. And there were fewer superchargers around in the early days. So Tesla developed this adapter because there were Chademos around. They were relatively popular because the Nissan Leaf early on was uh, very popular and Nissan Leafs, they charge on a Chedemo. So Tesla developed this adapter at the time and with this adapter you could charge uh, the early Tesla Model S <coughs> at a Chedemo. This adapter still works and it works still for current models because actually this is not just a physical adapter like the CCS adapter. Now, there is a control board in here, there's a PC board in here, there's electronics and there's software in here that makes the communication between this and this possible. So what it does, it, it takes uh, the Chedemo, translates it to Tesla and the other way around. So the charger and the car can communicate. And this here, this end, this end speaks Tesla. And that is important to know. Tesla language is different from CCS language, okay? So a lot of people <clears throat> that say, oh, the NAX is coming so you can charge anywhere and everywhere with your Tesla. That is not really true. Not all Teslas will be able to speak the language that have, uh, that is for a NAX, okay? The NAX is this plug that looks the same. That is the standard, okay? But the language that the NAX speaks has now been set in stone by the SAE, the Society of Automotive Engineers. They developed the standard J3400, which J3400 pretty much speaks the same language as CCS, okay? But not every Tesla speaks CCS. Our 2018 here behind me, our Model 3, it didn't use to speak CCS. No, it only spoke Tesla. And I upgraded it and there is a video, so you can go check that out. <coughs> so that it can speak CCS and I can use the CCS adapter. And obviously these Model 3s are still out there. Um, I think anything 2020 and older does not speak CCS unless, unless it's upgraded. But then uh, Model S, early Model S, I think up to about 2014 or 15 uh, cannot even be upgraded. So these older ones, like right to my right side here, there is our 2013 Model S, it cannot speak CCS, it only speaks Tesla. But with this, I can charge our Model S on a Chedemo only at 50 kilowatts, unfortunately. But at least I can charge, and at least there's still a few of these around 
Electrify America already two years ago said they're no longer installing them. Uh, they haven't upgraded any of the old Chademo chargers. They just upgrade the rest of them and leave the old one there, the one um, charging station with the Chademo. It's just the old one, but they work and make it possible. And since this here speaks Tesla, I can use this and charge a Cybertruck. This works guaranteed because the Tesla Cybertruck speaks Tesla right here. Um, it is uh, said, it has been said that it shows that the Cybertruck is CCS enabled and so it should speak CCS. But um, so I think Autospec tested it, they took the trim off so they could actually use the adapter and plug it in and it would not charge at a CCS, which could have been a communication issue, who knows. Um, it could be disabled in the truck even though it says it uh, can do CCS, who knows. But I guarantee you it will charge with this because this speaks Tesla. What's here on this end, the Tesla wouldn't know the difference between a supercharger or a Electrify America or an EVgo that has a Chedemo. So this may be the solution. Um, it probably will be the solution for us unless we get more superchargers or Tesla brings out a different CCS adapter that works with um, the Cybertruck. But yeah, this is currently my solution. I think as soon as we get the Cybertruck, I will test that out. So again, make sure you're subscribed to the channel and hit the notification bell so you get notified when this video comes out. But I'll be using this, I'm pretty sure, because there is Chedemos around along with the CCS. Um, there's not that many, yes, there's uh, most new ones do not uh, even add this one anymore, anymore and from now on they will add the NAX probably. But uh, it will be something that can be used. Now, if you want one, where can you get one? Well, good luck. Um, Tesla doesn't sell it anymore and I'm sure they have no interest in making this again ever because this is very difficult with all the stuff in here and software in here and oh it's uh yeah but um, you can possibly still find them online on eBay or other places used. Um, there is a couple aftermarket ones out there that you possibly could purchase they don't come cheap. <laughs> the retrofit, I think, is like four to five hundred dollars at Tesla to retrofit, and uh, like this 2018 to retrofit it to CCS and includes the adapter, right? And I think the adapter is uh, two hundred dollars or something on the Tesla website. Well, you will find this used probably three to seven hundred dollars. <laughs> um, I looked at many of them, but I didn't buy this new, I bought it used and I paid about $300 or $350 for this. Uh, most of them out there are five, six, seven hundred dollars $700. So it's quite an investment. So you might wanna wait and see if you really need it. But this here may become a very popular accessory again for some Cybertruck users that actually travel out into the boonies where we don't have supercharger access. So let me know down below in the comments if you would be willing to spend several hundred dollars on this to make travel out into the boonies uh, possible or would you rather just wait and don't travel out there and wait till Tesla comes up with another solution? Leave a comment down below, let me know what you think. Um, well, I have this already, so it's not like I have to go out and spend $600 right now when the Cybertruck shows up. I have it, we can use it and uh, we probably need it for some travel, uh, like I said, uh, going off the beaten path where we can find these 50 kilowatt chargers that currently usually still have a CCS and a Chedemo on it. All right, well, I just wanted to show you this big old clunky thing here and let you know that there is a solution for Cybertruck charging besides uh, superchargers. <laughs> So in any event, uh, make sure you are subscribed to our channel. Give us a thumbs up for this video. If you haven't been following the channel, click our channel icon and go look at the videos we have. Uh, we got tons of different videos, wintertime driving, summertime driving, um, 
we do lots of road trips, uh, 1000 miles in a day with an electric car. <laughs> uh, you can pick up lots of tips and tricks in those uh, uh, road trip videos and obviously especially with winter time here and lately the the issues we hear um, well the issues we hear that are more fought than <laughs> anything else or uh, people that unfortunately don't watch our videos and don't know how to uh, deal with an EV in the winter time right we hear stuff about EVs getting stuck and so on but watch our videos then you see it's actually not a problem if you know what you're doing we do tons of traveling and when the time driving here in montana in extreme cold in snow all this stuff during winter storms um, this is the common thing here and there's tons of tips and tricks in those videos so go check those videos out but again make sure you are subscribed to the channel hit the notification bell and give us a thumbs up thank you for watching goodbye